All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the studio. It's 8 o'clock Pacific. You know what that time it means. It is time for Watercolors with Michael doing a live stream. All right, so uh, tonight what we're going to do is kind of a last go around, a last hurrah of summertime uh, things. So I'm going to do kind of a collage of many different things here. Baseball glove, beach blank, uh, beach blanket, beach umbrella, uh, Slurpee, and a pair of sunglasses. That's what I'm going to do here. I've got it drawn out. I'm going to leave this picture in frame. Hey, fun stuff. How are you? Uh, and go through everything else I've got. I'm using uh, this evening. Whoop, there we go. My M. Graham paints here they are and once again I'm stuck my finger right inside of those let me turn the paint cam on there it is coming up I've got my color card here set up to the top so I'll know exactly what the colors are I can show you what they are the brushes that I'm gonna use I've got here uh, I'm gonna use my da Vinci squirrel mop brushes here they are. I've got a size 2 and a size 0. I love these brushes. And I'm going to use my Rubloff brushes that I haven't used in a while. I really like these. I'll talk more about these uh, as we paint. If anybody is interested in that, uh, the paper that I'm using is my old Pro Art paper. Here it is, uh, 12 by 16 in a spiral bound notebook. So that's there, 140 pound uh, paper. And uh, <clears throat> I don't really know where to start with this one. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, this baseball glove is frightening me to death. Oh! Um, hoping by. Uh, fun stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know what? I looked uh, at my computer over here, and I got your message up in two places. I have uh, the Restream app open, and I have YouTube open, and it came up twice. You're hoping that by watching this, this evening, it will become inspired to paint later tonight. Um, I hope so. <laughs> I'm hoping to be inspired to paint later tonight, too. No. Um, oh, that'll be fun. Uh, I, I've, I've done that before. In fact, lots of times what I'll do is, is um, as I'm out in the studio and I'm putzing around and I'm doing something, <clears throat> I'll take notice of something and go, oh, that's kind of neat. I like that. And uh, then I'll start painting late at night, like, I don't know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, uh, way late at night, later than I ought to be. And, uh, and then, of course, I don't get to bed until late, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to start with my baseball glove. Actually, before I do this, let's, let me pull a picture of the baseball glove in here a little bit. I'm going to start with this picture of the baseball glove. And I'm going to try to leave it here. Let me get these other ones out of the way. And I'm looking at this. Well, I can move it in the center for right now. I'm looking at this, and... I know that there's a, a, a lot of bright orangish colors. The whole thing's orangish brown. It's a baseball mitt, right? It's, it's leather. But I've got these lighter bits out here. And I'm hoping that if I put those on, uh, or this color on, this really light, rusty brown color, on the whole thing, that I can then go back with a darker color and leave that lighter color be uh, my highlights. So that's what I'm going to try. Uh, let me do one thing here. Oh no, you got a, you got a portrait started and, and it was a bit overwhelming as portraiture can be. If you're doing portraiture, Man, that's better than me. Portraiture is scary stuff because if I'm painting a 
a baseball mitt or some sunglasses or what else is on here? Uh, an umbrella. And I make a mistake. It still is going to look like whatever I'm painting. But man, portraiture is tough because you've got to be on it right away all the time. And if you make the slightest mistake in your drawing or in your painting and your proportions are off or your colors aren't quite right. Well, maybe not your colors not quite right, but um, if something is not quite right, wow, then it's going to look off a bit. That's I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have stayed away from portraiture for quite a while because it, it, it just seems a bit daunting to me. Maybe I should give it another go, but it's it's tough. If you're doing portraiture, you you've got my admiration. I'm I'm not going there right now. All right, so what I'm doing is <clears throat> I'm doing everything. Uh, I'm doing everything from this seam over. Uh, I guess I could go over that seam too. I, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do the whole mitt here, this color. And I think this will be a good color for the base of this mitt. And, and this is not any special color. This is an easy color. Uh, you, if you're wanting to tackle this, a baseball mitt on your own, you can find some similar colors. For me, this is only a mix of maroon perylene and yellow ochre. And that's it. And I've talked about yellow ochre before. If you're going to use yellow ochre, the thing to remember about yellow ochre is that it is um, it is awfully opaque. And so if you if you want to do something that has a lot of luminosity to it that you can kind of see through, then um, Yellow ochre probably isn't the color you want to use. You'll want to use something else, anything else but that, because it's so, so opaque. Okay, uh, I need to go around my baseball here. I'm hoping to, um, if I have to turn this page, I'm hoping to be able to keep it in the center of my workspace. I know that would be a first. I understand that, <laughs> uh, but I'm trying. Uh, the other thing I should let you in on that I'm thinking about as I'm filling this in is I've got a pair of sunglasses here, a nice pair of Ray-Bans. Ray-Bans will always remind me of summer. Uh, or remind me growing up in my summers. I guess where I live now, people wear these year round and it's not such a big deal. Uh, but I've got lenses on here and I did draw behind these lenses. I, uh, I'm not gonna make these totally black black like lots of the wayfarers are. But I want to make them darker, and so I'm, I'm trying to think uh, how I want to paint back here to bring out that color, but still, still be true to Wayfarers, which do have pretty dark uh, lenses in them. I know you're all probably laughing at me. As soon as I get close to a line, <laughs> as soon as I get close to a line, I stop talking because <clears throat> I know that uh, I know that I've got to concentrate. Let me 
I'm going to rotate this around. I'm going to keep rotating it around. I'm going to do it slowly. Let's see. I'm going to turn my picture over this way so I can see what I'm looking at. I'm going to do it slowly so we don't make anybody seasick. That wouldn't be any good. Actually, a lot of these... Uh, I don't know if the lines on this stitching actually match up with the number of stitches. I got to do it in some of this line work for these stitches coming around the top of this glove. And I just started drawing a few. Uh, Fun Stuff says the video is stuttery. Um, it could be me. In fact, I forgot, normally I reset my router um, in the house before I come out here, and that seems to clear everything up. I, I, I forgot to do that tonight, so it could be me. Let me make sure everything else on my computer seems to be right. Yes, yes. Everything else seems to be right. Let's hope it's going to clear up. Let's hope it's YouTube. And that they'll take care of everything on their end. And just in case anybody is wondering, we've got a few images here, four different things. And yes, I am thinking that this probably is going to be a two-parter. There's probably more here than we're going to get to in one night. Uh, just so everybody knows, get in here inside my glasses. I probably could not be as careful around these glasses as I need to be because they are going to be painted very dark after all and painting dark over a light is not such a big deal but we're gonna see how it goes we're gonna we're gonna work through as much as we can get through tonight maybe I'll pick up the pace We'll see how it goes. Um, no, it's probably just a video. The audio is fine. Well, okay. I'm glad that... Ooh, let's see. Where does this go? I'm glad the audio is fine. Okay. Uh, that's my first go around for... Actually, it's not my first go around. While I have my paint here, before I do anything with it, I've got a couple of... got a little knot here with a string that comes off of it. And a knot here comes out and looks like I've drawn one here everything else is behind or something like that okay I'm gonna leave it like that that's gonna be my glove for right now um, let's see we've got a few people watching YouTube has 13 I'm not sure how many uh, Twitch has, but if anybody is out there and you have any questions, please, please throw them out there. I will try to answer them best as I can while I'm painting. You'll just have to be patient with me. I do normally get uh, to all of the comments. I believe I get to all the comments. I get close to all the comments. Um, so any questions you have about the, the the painting, the reference photos, the, the paint over here, which isn't quite straight. Uh, there it is. Uh, or uh, questions of me, just throw them out there. I'm happy to answer any and all questions. Um, I'm going to save the glasses till last because they have the, the least amount of uh, color on them. The least amount of interest. I think what I'm going to come over and do now is my umbrella here. I'm going to grab my brush again and I'm going to mix a little Payne's gray. I've already got some gray there. I wonder what that was from. 
and I'm going to use a little bit of turquoise. I love this turquoise color. And I'm going to use this color as my underneath. Actually, oh, actually, that's not so bad. I was going to say I could throw a little bit more blue in there, but I think what I'll do is add the blue as I go along. And that will help it to, I don't know, kind of break up the colors here a little bit. Make it a little bit more blue there. Uh, and while I'm doing this, I do have an announcement to make for everybody. I'll make it on YouTube. I'll post it to my website. I'll make sure everybody knows. But after next week, I will be uh, changing days I do my live stream. I'm going to have to move them to Wednesdays because of other obligations I'm going to have on Saturdays. And I hope that's not going to inconvenience anybody too much. I hope everybody who um, is able to join me now is still able to join me on Wednesday evenings. And um, with any luck, we'll get some new viewers. Uh, I know that being this late at night anyways is difficult for, whoa, look, I'm bringing that with me. Difficult for anybody in the United States on the East Coast or well, anybody in Europe or anywhere east of the East Coast of the United States. It's tough because it's so uh, late in the evening for them or early in the morning and if you are west of California of me it's a little easier because it's earlier in the day or earlier in the morning and I hope that won't inconvenience anybody too too much no questions that's Fine, I can continue to do this. And this also is just a base layer of color. This does have Payne's Gray in it. So as it dries, it's going to lighten up more and more and more. And as it dries, we're going to see more of that turquoise color in here. And just like I did with the umbrella a couple of weeks ago, and we'll do it with this one. We're going to put in some nice uh, shading and really give this a good 3D treatment. Okay, uh, maybe I didn't even show this. Can I set it down? Let me move this to the side just a little bit. So this is all I'm doing is I'm putting this, uh, the umbrella I picked happens to have a silver uh, or metallic uh, undercoating under here. So that's all I'm putting on. When this dries, oh, look at that. Oh, right on my baseball glove. When this dries, then we'll go and we'll put the blue on the top. And we'll go about it that way. I think what I'm going to move on to now, uh, while that's drying, is my Slurpee. And this one looks difficult, and I, but I don't think it's going to be all that hard. I just need to pick a color of blue uh, to do this with. And it's more going to be an exercise of painting in the lines uh, than it is going to be difficult to do. At least that's my hope. Let's see, I'm going to get a little bigger brush while I'm mixing here. This 
one. All right, that might be, well, that's not it's too bright. I guess we'll put a little, I'll do a little mix of cobalt blue and cerulean blue. I'm a little leery always of using too much of the cerulean. Um, I should look. What is my cerulean? Cerulean is PB36. Um, a lot of companies use a mixture of ultramarine and titanium white to make their cerulean. That's what I was told. Um, I'm using M grams, and they don't appear to be doing that, which is a good thing for me. But it is a little on the opaque side, and I just want to be careful with it a little bit. I guess it. I guess in thinking a little bit more about it, it doesn't matter all that much because am I getting off the page here? I thought I had a mark down at the bottom, so I wouldn't do that. I guess it doesn't all matter all that much because um, I'm not really mixing it with anything else. Uh, do I trace the images, sketch, or both? Um, I do. I do a little of both, if I'm being honest with everybody. In. In this uh, image, one second here, I'll get to answering your question. In this image, I did the I I, I traced the baseball glove. I wanted to make sure I got everything in the right order. I wanted to make sure all my stitching on the side was right. And uh, so I did do that. Uh, that might be maybe it on this one. Uh, and what do I use to do my tracings? I showed it last week. I have a an LED light box. It's not a box. <laughs> It's more like a notebook. It's it's not very thick. It's really thin. Um, and it's super bright. Um, and so I get, I'm able to get the outline of this and where some marks are on there. And then I can freehand the rest of whatever I want to. Hey, Donna, how are you? Uh, I tuned in late and missed the color used on the glove. Okay, so the glove is super simple. This is just my first layer on the glove. Um, I got it over here. It is is just a, an easy mixture of maroon perylene, this nice dark one here, and uh, yellow ochre. And the umbrella... Up here is just a mixture of, that's this one in here, uh, turquoise and paint. Okay, well it looks like I might be back. I am live. My interview is good. Can, is anybody still there? Can anybody hear me? Somebody please <laughs> say something. If anybody is there. Okay, I don't know... If anybody's here, okay, Caroline, you're here. Can you see me? Can you see what I'm doing? Because for me, okay, fun. Okay, fun stuff is here. Oh, this is really interesting. Um, so everything stopped for me. It went dead. I ran into the house. I rebooted my router. All my lights are green now. 
Uh, the problem that I have is that when I look at the screen on my computer, I don't have an image. So please tell me, uh, Carolyn or Fun Stuff, tell me uh, if I need to do something different because I won't be able to tell. Uh, okay. Oh! Mr. C. Tay, you're back. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, I'm up to five now. All right, I'm going to start going again here. Uh, I was painting in my Slurpee. I get, and I should say, well, I don't, I guess I shouldn't say, I, I will say, when I was doing this, Uh, what my inspiration for the what what this particular painting was going to be was Little League Baseball. Um, so I can vividly remember going out and trying to find the coolest sunglasses I could. <laughs> in order to wear them during the baseball games. And uh, the, what I really wanted, I don't even know if baseball players wear them anymore, were the sunglasses where the lenses flipped up. If you flipped them up, you had like nothing between your eyes and the sun, but when you flipped them down, they were sunglasses. I just thought those were the coolest uh, sunglasses that you could ever wear, especially for playing baseball. Mine were always an old pair of sunglasses. Well, not always, but usually an old pair of sunglasses, whatever I could find laying around the house. Something my parents had had or had used at one point in time. And generally way too big for my face <laughs> my uh, my head is a, a bit thin and so the glasses always looked a little oversized on me I just tell myself that that's part of my endearing charm And I'm just going around this with this blue mixture. Got some really fine lines here. I don't even know how I'm going to do this. I'll just make one up here on my own. So I'll do one line here and just one on the side of that Slurpee. There we go. And when you're done with your baseball game, um, man, we would always go and find a treat somewhere. Typically, it was at the Dairy Queen, but wherever we could go. Uh, what is my favorite baseball team? Well... <clears throat> I'm a Cleveland Indians fan. That may not be the best thing to say, but I grew up in the... Cleveland was always there, and so we always watched the Cleveland Indians, and um, I watched them through thick and thin, being good, being really bad, a lot of being really bad, and now they're getting good again, so... That's fun to watch. I'm mixing up a little bit more of my yellow ochre here and a little bit of get a little bit more of this ochre color and a little bit of sepia. Spread this around on that baseball. I just learned 
this past week that there's one guy in all of the world who digs up a particular kind of mud for Major League Baseball and packages it for them. It's a super, super fine kind of a mud or silt and uh, he ships it off to all of the Major League Baseball teams and they use it to rub on their balls to take a little bit of the shine off. Okay, it says video output low again. Um, I don't know that I can do anything about this. There's I don't know what's going on with it. It's going on and off and on and off. I don't like it. I wish it wouldn't do that. Uh, it looks as though at the moment it's fine. I can't make any promises that it's going to stay fine. Mr. C. Tate is a Boston Red Sox fan. I'm all for Boston when they're beating New York. Not so much so when they're knocking the Indians out of the playoffs. I'm just trying to darken this baseball up a little bit. This is a little Payne's Gray. It's going to dry a lot lighter than it is. I'm not worried about it drying all that lightly, to be honest with you, though, because we're probably still going to have to darken it up a little bit after this. But there it goes. Video output is low yet again. I wish... I wish I could do more with this. I don't, everything is. Okay, it's really bad here. I don't know what to tell anybody. I'm going to try to keep going uh, and hope that it doesn't go down again in hopes of um, everyone being able to watch it later if they want. Or at least it'll be there as a prep for next week. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit further and we'll see what happens with it. Okay, um, I'm gonna mix up. I'm gonna go back to my maroon color. I'm going to mix that with a little bit of burnt umber. I still want to keep that nice red color for my mitt. Actually, that's a little too red. I'm going to drop a little bit, just a little bit of this ochre in there. That, to me, uh, looks like a good color. Uh, hi, Connie. Welcome. Um, 
the stream has been up and down. I don't know how it's going to look to you right now uh, as you're coming in. So if it goes up or goes down, I apologize. Um, it's out of my control. I don't know what's going on with my internet here and it's distressing me quite a bit. But I'm gonna keep going for a little while. Well, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, uh, so my stream is not working for some reason. I'm going to continue on with just a traditional video and I will try to put them all together at some point. I'm really not happy about it. But sometimes that's the way it goes and we don't have a whole lot of say about it. So I'm gonna try not to stress about it too much and just continue on with what we've got here. And what I'm basically doing is I'm looking at my image. In fact, as soon as I'm done with this little bit, I will stop and, and show you exactly what I'm doing. But in essence, what I'm doing is I'm taking my reference image and I'm going to piece together bits from it here and there. I don't want a hard line here. And where I need to add a little color, I'm gonna add a little color. And where I, I don't need any color, I'm gonna not, <laughs> not add any color. Uh, nobody ever said painting was rocket surgery. Um, but that's, that's all I'm doing here in I don't necessarily want this to be super um, cohesive. Is that the right word? If my colors aren't exactly right in here, if I get a little bit too much red, if I get a little too much brown, if they're not quite as dark as they should be, no, no, not that they should be, as they are on the reference photo, if something else is going on with it. I'm not going to worry about it too much because it's an old leather glove, right? So I just did part of this finger right here. And you can see with that additional layer, all of a sudden now it's, it's a little lighter here. Maybe it's a little worn out there. Maybe it's a little bent here a little bit. And, um, oops, that's not the right brush. And so we're starting to develop all these little vagaries and differences in each of these. And this is what's going to give it uh, a little bit of personality in here. Uh, the thing I'm not going to do is paint the strings that are holding this glove uh, together or the little eye holes. I'm going to paint those in later. I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do or not, but that's how I'm going to try to handle this. And we'll see how it goes. Right, and maybe I need a little bit more of some ochre in here. That ochre was way too wet. <laughs> Uh, this to me, this is the fun part of, uh, of painting, where you get to, uh, you get to, you know, put on the layer where things 
start to become what you want them to be. The, the first layer of color is nice. It's always there. It always helps with a background. <clears throat> There's a lot to be gained from putting on a nice undercoat or, or first layer of paint. But it's the second layer. It's the third layer where the life of whatever you're doing really starts to come out. And that's what I want to get in here. This is a little bit more maroon. There we go. Maybe that's some of the original color of that glove still up in there a little bit. Let's let that come out and do its own thing over here. I'm not going to do too much with it. And then we can just go around this glove and do this. Oh, man. Whoa. Little bits, little bits of color. Let's see, we got it's darker, way darker up here. Right, I'm not trying to duplicate this painting. I'm trying to take from it the essence of that painting and make the rest of it mine. And right, I. I've, I've said for years now that I, I'm not a photo realistic painter by any stretch. <laughs> if you've seen anything I've painted, you've known that's, that's true. But I don't try to be. Um, what I try to do is get from these reference photos the essence of whatever it is and then duplicate that essence, instill that essence into whatever I'm painting. So yes, it's gonna look much like the reference photo, but I don't want it to be exact. I don't want it to be anywhere near an exact copy of what that reference photo is. I want it to be all of whatever it makes me feel. And I think when I do that, then I do a better job painting. The painting comes out better. Um, I can talk about it better. You know, I feel better about it. All of those good things that come out of it. A really dark back up in here. Let's see. Right around this stitching. It's pretty dark around this stitching. I don't know. I may find that this is not the right way to go around this stitching. I haven't painted a baseball glove before. I don't exactly know the best way to paint a baseball glove, but this is the way I'm trying it. This is the way I'm going to do it. If you're wondering why I'm stopping and what I'm doing, I'm <laughs> since I know that I am notorious for getting my hands and palm and all kinds of stuff <clears throat> into my painting. Uh, what I'm trying to do is not do that. So I have to take a second to look to see if this is dry and if that's dry. I know it should be, but um, I want to give that a shot anyway at checking it. Give, take the shot of checking it out anyway because... So many times I've thought things are going to be dry, and I've touched them, and they aren't. So that little extra look really probably does me well. Shoot, let's just take all these colors and put them in there a little bit. So 
something like that I think is going to work out real nicely. We're going to rest my hand. I know you guys can't. I wish I could put on like uh, Google glasses or or something like that. So as I look at this part of the painting, even though my brush, you know, maybe sitting over here somewhere, thinking about something over here, you can see what I'm looking at as I'm talking about it. I often think that would help out. And I'm going to go right up to my sunglasses there. Let me smooth a little bit of this out so I can stop and assess where I'm at. And I don't think it looks too bad, just a quick glance down at what I'm doing. I don't think it looks too bad. That's not a good way to say it. I think it looks good the way we're going with it. Um, it's It definitely looks like it's modeled, like it's old and beaten and handled and it's been there for a while. I'm glad about that. mix a bit more of these colors here because back behind this baseball it's pretty dark back here and as long as we're doing the glove let's continue to do this glove <clears throat> Now, I'm looking at the sunglasses, and when I ran into the house a few moments ago, I took my glasses off, <clears throat> and now, now I don't have my glasses, and I kind of need them. It's gonna, this could be an issue. We'll figure something out here. We'll figure out a way to do this. How's that? Is that looking okay? I think that's looking okay. Let's get some more, a little bit more color down in through here. Let this all spread out and have fun over here. <clears throat> now I do need to go back in right on the inside of these and put some color. If I get over the line a little bit, that's fine. If I don't quite make it to the line a little bit, that's gonna be fine too. This is the area around the seams. There's that one. Let's see, this this finger doesn't really show any seams. But there is some stitching there. And I want this to be distinctly different. It's a different piece of leather. So something like that. If you're coming down there, then you ought to be coming over here. Let's see how that looks. 
I think we're getting some real, uh, real good baseball mitishness in here. If that's a word, it's probably not a word. I think it should be. Probably, you'll see that in Webster's Dictionary next year. Mittishness. It's going to be right in there. Let's see, I'm looking at this. This needs to. I think that's going to help that out quite a bit. The thing I have kind of working against me a little bit is that everything's running this way on me. Just running this way a little bit, ever so slightly. My table is... I need to turn this yet again. My table is slanted. On about a 10, maybe 15 degree slant. And I do that to try and gain as much control over the water as I can. If I'm painting something and I'm on the flat and I put a bunch of water down. If it's flat, that water can go any direction it wants to. And I lose a little bit of control over it. But if I've got it on a slight angle, I know again, I'm <laughs> turning this all over. If I've got this on a slight angle, then I can control what direction <clears throat> that that water can flow. All right, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the camera over there to see how this looks, to see if it looks anything like my reference photo. And you know what? I'm actually kind of happy with the way it looks. Uh, and I'm, de <laughs> I'm, re I'm deciding where I want to stop, where I want to press my luck at. Um, I think I'm going to do a bit up here. Let's see if I can't blend this down just a little bit. And I'm going to drop down a couple of sizes. Get a bit of a smaller brush so I can get into this fine area in here. I'm not sure how. This seam gets stitched together here. I don't know exactly how that goes, but I don't think it goes <laughs> quite how I wanted it to go. I'm going to leave it like that before I do too much and start really monkeying with it. Um, because if I did any up here, any on the stitching up here, I'd have to put my hand here, and I know that's a no-no. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with the webbing here, so I'm going to call a halt to that for a moment, and I'm going to put, well, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to put some of this blue on the top. I'm just going to go with cobalt blue on this one. 
on the top of my umbrella so everything over here is dry and this is the first layer of this so we can put it on uh, in one big fell swoop I guess I don't, did I ever, I think I said I was going to show you something on the baseball glove. I don't know if I did that. Okay, when I'm done, I'm going to pull out my reference photos here. We're going to take a look at them. And we're going to decide what we need to do. Why didn't I draw that straight? I don't understand that. I'm sure there was a fantastic reason at the time that I went, this is going to have a few bumps here. Oh, well, I guess where the, the post goes into the top would be a bump up there. Looks like I've drawn it more like a crown almost. <laughs> That's silly. All right, and I think I'm still on screen here. I know that's another bad habit. So this is something I learned. I didn't always used to do this. You see me taking a hundred strokes here to paint this little area. And it really doesn't take that long to paint that area. What I'm trying to do when I do that is paint little strokes on an area that I know has paint on it and each time I paint a subsequent stroke just make the tiniest movement and move my hand over move my hand over and that way I can just nibble 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 and get right up to the edge and paint um, right at the edge of this okay so I've got my umbrella, which is wet on the top. Got the mitt, which is wet um, in the mitt. <laughs> so, uh, so I guess what I'm going to do is, oh, let's see. Okay, so not letting this touch. So here's what we're going to do. We're, we're when this dries, we're going to come back and we're going to put some darker areas on here. Some darker areas on here. Uh, we're definitely going to darken up a few areas underneath here. Just make a lot of contrast between these two. It's got to be a lot darker under here, right, under here, and leave a lot of this lightness on the top. Uh, so we'll do that. And the Slurpee, I'm hoping when we make this dark here that the red of this Slurpee is going to stand out. Uh, and that's what I'm going to paint next. I'm going to paint the red of this along with some of the red here. And I think what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to start by taking some of this away. We're going to be done with that for just a second. And I'm going to use some of this Pyrol Red with just a bit of let's see pyrol red just a bit of this permanent alizarin crimson and with any luck that's going to give us a good cherry strawberry berry anyways flavor of the slurpee flavor maybe flavor color of a Slurpee. Let's be honest, the flavor is mostly sugar. Must be quiet when I paint around something.
more pyrol. Let's see, is it getting a little redder in the front here? I don't want to get it too thick. I do that from time to time. I want to get it more in the middle so everybody can see. I think that's a good slurpy flavor color. I'm going to go with that. I'm okay. I'm totally okay with that. And then I'm going to use that same color uh, down here on the, the Slurpee cup. All I have to do is find the ones that are red colored. Actually, I could do every other one of these red and nobody would ever know that it wasn't right. There are two dark blue. stripes in here we could do okay and let's just finish out this I hate to call it a corner. Looks like a corner. That edge of the cup. Oh, why didn't I start over there? Why? <laughs> I have to go on, paint across that now. I have to pretend like I know what I'm doing. Yeah, it's looking good. It's like an actual Slurpee cup here. The cup is just a lot of lines, if you haven't noticed. It's an exercise of can you paint inside the lines, but there are a couple of challenges that are going to be presented with this. The main challenge is going to be over on the this edge, well the, in this edge to some extent also, when we need to darken this so that we can give this cup some roundness. It's a base, it's basically a cylinder. So we need to give it some dimension. Can't just let it be flat. How are we going to be able to do that? See, that's the that's the big question. All right, you see I left one line here unpainted because we've got one dark blue on each side so I'm going to not to paint that in with red anyways should stop and get my glasses at some point would probably make this a whole lot easier if I could see what I was doing actually but I think we got it for the most part let's see I need that one to be blue so I can paint this one 
red. That one's blue. This one is red. All the way down there. Our red puddle is dwindling on our palette. Which means there's a chance, there's just a chance that we've mixed up just about the right amount. But even if we didn't, I think I know where I can get more. Ooh, look at this. One little sliver here. And I know I'm not very good at that. Why do I do that to myself? I could easily have just made all of these big wide swirl things <laughs> I don't know what they're called swirl things swirl marks on this cup and uh, nobody would have been the wiser we all would have just gone well it looks just like it's supposed to but no I had to draw most of the lines. I don't think I have all of them anyways. Most of them. There we go. And let's see, what should I make my dark green? I'll use a little bit of phthalo. Dark green. Did I just say dark green? dark blue. I don't have like an anthro blue or something like that, so I'm going to make my own. Maybe a little neutral tint would be better. That'll work. I'm going to, this is phthalo blue with a bit of, well, it's, I guess it's got a bit of neutral tint and a bit of Payne's gray in there. And I know the word Slurpee is in white in the reference drawing. Here it is. Uh, but I knew that the white uh, with blue around it and then white letters again was going to be an issue. So I'm going to take a little bit of license and I'm just going to paint the word Slurpee the same as this color blue. And now I've gotten my glasses on. Oh, the whole world looks a little bit different. How about that? I can't see anything more than about foot and a half away from me but everything up to that part looks different it's more in focus it's funny how that is okay There we go, and there's no way I'm painting the word Slurpee with this brush. If I have to paint this, <laughs> I'm definitely dropping down a brush. I haven't tried to do any lettering in quite a long time. This will be interesting
I'm just, I, I don't know. I hope my, I hope my head is not in the way of the camera here. There's a very distinct possibility that it is. But my S is very dark. I'm just taking a little excess paint from that. using it on everything else I didn't really want to have to go back and put a second coat of paint on these letters but I might have to At least a couple of them. Well, that kind of says Slurpee. Kind of. We'll see. We'll see how that dries up. Um, I'm not dissatisfied with it. I think it could be better, but I'm not dissatisfied with it. All right. Now comes ah uh, too much, too much, too much. This pile over here. A little bit of shading here on the Slurpee itself. Let's see if we can get something that approximates a Slurpee pour. There's one. I know there's one right here that needs a little bit of help. Let's get that to it. There we go. That's uh, too much. Take a little bit of that off. Here we go. We can always push that way back down there. Oh, we got another one kind of behind our glasses here. I'm trying to, I've, I've been saying this for a long time, and it's true, it's a lot harder to do than I ever would have thought. But I try not to get too much paint on my brush at any one time. I want to go back and make multiple layers if I have to or something for anything rather than put on one layer I want to get in the mindset of it's okay to put on two three layers of paint it's not a big deal rather than just one layer of paint. Because you actually have a, it, it does take a little bit longer to do that one layer, but you get a result that is usually a lot better. And I have my first 
outside the line mark right there, and I don't think I can do anything about it at the moment. Oh, so what do you think? It's kind of it's kind of getting there, right? Now there is a little bit of color on this side too. Right, I did a shadow on the on one side of these. There's a bit of shadow. Shadow is not the right word. Low light on the other side of these swirls. I want to put it on just one side. So that light gleaming kind of in the middle of these, and we'll get a much more rounded effect on there. The one on the top has got to be really tiny. <clears throat> that actually looks to me like it's been swirled in there a little bit. This does look a little funky right here. Uh, but it's that way because that's the end of the sunglasses. So going to kind of live with that for a second or two. I don't have too much uh, to do about that. Okay, so what do we do next? I think what we do next is I'm going to I'm going to start to darken up the top of my umbrella up here. And again, another small brush. I don't need a big brush. What do I have here? This is a number three. Uh, and I was using cobalt blue. And I'm just going to mix that with the pile of blue that we had there. And I'm going to see if I can just do something like this. Blend this out really nicely. I'm going to go back at some point in time and see how many times I rotate my paper around. It's got to be a ton. I'm not apologizing, but it is kind of funny that I do it that much. And this kind of goes like that. Right, if we want to take it a little further, we can put a little bit of a little bit of that in there like that. It look fairly realistic. I don't like the hard lines on the edges is all I'm trying to get out of there at the moment. I know the world does have some hard edges. I get it. I understand. I keep telling myself. I tell myself all the time I need to learn to love some of the hard edges on my paintings. And in the end, uh, I don't. <laughs> I try to. I want to. Doesn't always happen. Um... So be it. Someday maybe I'll get there. I almost, almost started singing a Kermit the Frog song there. Someday we'll find it. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Don't want to sing. Don't want to sing. No singing. Singing bad. Bad singer. That's a better way to put it. Bad singer. Singing not bad. Singing good. Singer bad. That's the way to say it. Alright, see, I've a futzed around here. 
my colors gotten a bit dry and now I'm trying to go back come on if I can get the right color I'm trying to go back on it with a slightly different color and that's or a slightly more watery color and that's not gonna cut it I think I'm gonna do this and leave it like that and come over to the next one over here I didn't draw in the uh, the the flappy bit I didn't draw in where that flappy bit is actually at on this umbrella I didn't think I would need it and now I'm looking at it going man that would have been uh, that would have been helpful But I think we got it. I think that autumn already gave uh, quite a bit of, yeah, I don't, uh, gotta, anyway, it gave quite a bit of uh, interest to the top of that. Uh, now I can go with a little bit bigger brush, and I'm going to remake some of my dark color here. And this was, I remember this, this was Payne's Gray and this Turquoise. Go a little more Payne's gray in there. In this instance, and I'm going to do the same thing here, but where I have the ribs going this way, I'm going to. Oh, this would be this would be easier. Got a lot of water in there. I didn't mean to get quite that much water. I'll take some of that away. It's a pretty soupy mix I have there. It doesn't need to be quite that wet. And I'm going to blend this down to absolutely nothing just like that I'm going to look at another panel I can probably do this one got to paint around my sunglasses who's the guy who drew a giant pair of sunglasses right in the front of this completely ridiculous why anybody would do that is beyond me well some of them don't always do the smartest thing but even with a giant pair of sunglasses in my way I think we've managed to get something nice in there. That looks good to me. We steal a little bit of that color. A little bit of. Okay. Now, doing just a little less color on this one because I don't think we need so much here and I'm hoping that this is gonna dry lightly it is Payne's gray so there's a good chance it'll be very dry I'm sorry very light when it dries I gotta do this one over here don't I
This is the area. Oh, I, I'm like going, what's going on over here? This is the area that when it was still wet, the baseball glove touched it. That's why it looks funny. Right here on the back of the baseball glove, touched right there, made some dots on it. Made it look a bit odd, if I'm being honest about it. And it sounds as though, if you could hear that, it sounds as though the neighborhood cat has just <laughs> jumped on the roof. Walking across the roof of the garage as we speak. I know I've been spinning this a little more quickly, and you're probably all seasick. I'm going to have to send you all out some Dramamine or something so that you don't get seasick while you're watching me paint. Uh, I'm going to leave that be like that just for a second, and I'm going to come and do some work on our baseball. See if we can't sink that back into the mitt just a little bit. So I, I'm, I'm digging the way the mitt is looking here. I don't know that I want to do too, too much with this. I know we got some stitching and stuff to do. That's fine. Um, and I like kind of the way we're at around the baseball, but... Especially over here, we need to darken this up. That needs to be a bit, quite a bit darker back there. This half of it on this side, I think, is pretty much okay. Um, I'm going to leave that, but yeah, we're definitely going to darken this up over there. So let's start by doing that with... Let's get a little bit of that sepia, or a lot of that sepia. A little bit of our yellow ochre. And it's going back inside here. This mitt is this reddish color, so I want to use a little bit of the um, burnt umber to give it just a bit of that reddish color feel. And let's see, the color comes up to here-ish. I'm just trying to make this so it'll look like this ball is round. We can blend a lot of the rest of this out. And we're gonna swip again. Don't worry, we're not quite done with this baseball yet. Even after this, we do have some stitching that's going to need to go on here. So, we do have that, and that's going to help to bring a little extra life to the party. Man, when I'm when I get this around right side up, boy, I think this baseball looks great. I'm, I'm liking this baseball in here. I didn't know exactly how that was going to turn out, but <laughs> it looks pretty good in, in that mitt. Okay, and before I go any further, I'm going to take a little break right here. I'm going to pause the video over there, and uh, uh, we'll be back later.